jumping to Kaneko Man now. <laughs> Cause uh, now, we're, now we're getting back yeah, on track. I have a feeling this is going to go longer, too. <laughs> <laughs> back on track to, you know, manly anime, because Kaneko Man... Yeah. It's like, Kaneko Man is definitely earlier than Twisted the North Star, and, like, the only other thing that's just as um, around the time period would be, like, Rini Kaketo, but I can't talk about that because I haven't read too much from it, even to this day. Yeah. Three years, it still hasn't been that much. And there's obviously some more older Manly series, but most of them are barely being even translated right now. Yeah, I mean, I think the only other ma- older Manly series we have experience with would be like Go Go, but... Yeah, but I'm talking yeah. about like, like other ones like... Um, I forgot their names. But there's this one author that also does like Manly stuff like back in the 60s and early 70s, but we barely know anything about him, and I can't even think of his name on the spot. <laughs> translations man yeah so you know everyone takes their time so. i mean yeah i wouldn't do that because you know you can go to jail for these types of things so. yeah yeah so to be careful out there i guess <laughs> scan the leaders and translators yeah that's why i think should just be more officially licensed but it hasn't happened not everything's licensed because like, i think most people would buy it it's just like they need that I don't know. Yeah, I need some exposure. But then again, even my anime club, when I, like when they find out I have like a manga collection, they're like, oh wow, it's a boy, you have a manga collection. I'm like, what, you guys don't? <laughs> like, no, manga's too expensive. I'm like, oh. I don't know, not compared to anime. Anime is like... <laughs> well, then again, over here, we have like, we barely have any outlets to get anime. Yeah. So it's like, I just have to settle for manga. Yeah, I want to buy all the anime. Buy all the anime, even the bad ones. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> buy the bad ones so they could like no one else would have to. Yeah. I'm the anime hero. I buy bad anime so you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that will never happen. But I, I do want to be big enough <laughs> so I could talk about people and be like, hey, watch this show. It deserves it. <laughs> no one pays attention. Like you know, no one pays attention to Time Twenty Four. <laughs> No See, that, that's that, that's basically my channel in a nutshell. I, I talk about shows no one cares about in hopes that one day they will. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, back to... <laughs> that's the premise. Back... Oh, yeah, Kaneko Man. <sighs> it's manly, it's in the title. Look, Kaneko Man. <laughs> and in English, it means muscle man. So I'm like, oh, you know what you're getting. <laughs> yeah, you know what you're getting. No, actually, no. You're, you're, like, you don't... Well, I don't know. Not really. You don't know what you're getting because it gets so fucking outrageous. And Kaneko Man just it, like it escalates so much to the point where like you're reading it and you're just like I don't I don't think it can handle this. It just keeps on going and, like it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. It still hasn't stopped and it's like I've been what reading like 200 plus chapters. It still hasn't stopped. It continues to blow my mind. <laughs> yeah. It's like damn it, you Tom go. What are you on? Yeah, they're on farts, man. You know. They're on, yeah, man. They just like. <laughs> <laughs> they just fart and hail like yes. Maybe they got inspired. Maybe their current work got inspiration. They got inspired by that fart by that fart anime. And they're like, you know what? I got an idea. Let's keep making it to more Kaneko Man. <laughs> Maybe they have like fart stands that help them draw. <laughs> it's they just fart and like got like fart platinum come out. Yeah. <laughs> just... Yeah, they're they're pushing <laughs> they're pushing their farts as they draw every panel. Yeah, because Kaneko Man, it starts off as a parody to Ultraman because it's all basically superhero comedy in the beginning because uh, the arc is the kaiju extermination arc where they're just fighting kaijus and then Kaneko Man is the most unpopular hero ever. No one likes yeah. him. No, there's no respect or love for Kaneko Man because yeah. everyone has, you know, Kamen Rider and Ultraman and all those other good Japanese superheroes and you protect them. Yeah, or sometimes they'll ask help from, like, Astro Boy or Spider-Man or from other countries. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that one time, like, what about the American superheroes? Like, nah, man, they're all weak. <laughs> and I'm like, ooh, someone's trying to start a death battle over yeah. here. Yeah, because they even mentioned that Ultra- that the Kaneko Man are, like, well, were stronger than any hero, because even the Ultraman were, like, above all American superheroes. <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm like, ooh. Oof, that's I starting to, some fire, I need, man, to check the com- I need to check where the common writers are are in the in the power scale in Kaneko Man. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, because there was a power skill, because I remember, like, all the American superheroes were pretty low. Mm. Japan like, number one. Tier. Yeah, I can't remember, like, the first episode, like, oh, we need help. Oh, is that Astro Boy? No, it's Kaneko Man. Oh, get him away from me. <laughs> yeah, because, like, when Kaneko Man... There is an episode where there's this monster who has his kid hostage, and Kaneko Man, like, wants to get him. And then, like, the kid's like, no, go away, Kaneko Man, you smell. <laughs> It's like there's a monster that's about to kill you. <laughs> no respect. R E S P E C T. No, no, no respect to Kaneko, man. Actually, there's a sad light. Oh, actually, there is a group of. Well, there's actually a trio of villains and also muscle villains that are called No Respect. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's in in a small mini, mini arc, but yeah, but that's too ahead of its time. We're stuck. We're stuck in the first series right now. Can you come in? <laughs> oh yeah. So eventually, well, there's always been hints of wrestling, but then it just becomes a full up, full on superhero wrestling series, and even then, it's not normal. <laughs> Like, cause you can use weapons, you can use bear claws, you can kill people, turn them to ramen. And all of this Fuck is, be you. yeah. What makes it so different is because all the character, all the heroes and villains are, are chojins, which translates to Superman. And basically, a chojin means it could be fucking anything. It, it could be like yeah. a normal looking type of person, like Terry Man, or you could have like, a, or you could be a robo chojin like War Man, or you could be a straight up animal hybrid like buffalo man or sneak gator or it could be something ridiculous like fucking um like urinal man yeah <laughs> oh yeah which is just yeah a giant fucking urinal with a shit on his head that's like an incan god yeah <laughs> well actually it was an incan like guardian or something but whatever. okay you can guard still yeah still though <laughs> what the fuck yeah curry cook actually has a dark story <laughs> Uh, yeah, so... I, I don't even, I don't even. Well, I, I just can't. Well, that's the thing, because Kaneko... Dark. Yeah, because Kaneko Man, in the beginning, it was like a pretty... It's it's kind of, was pretty rough around the edges with a lot of its characters. Not just in drawings, but also in, like, storytelling. Yeah, because, like, in Kaneko Man, like, it's... When you put ethics into context, man, like, almost everyone beside Kaneko Man in the beginning is, like, an asshole. Yeah. Like, Terry Man was, like, wanting money from everyone to be a superhero. Robin Mask was, like, fucking brutal, was trying to kill uh, Kaneko Man, and then, like, he comes back and he has this, like, really weird scheme to get back at Kaneko Man with Wars Man. He basically uses Wars Man, and Wars Man's, like, fucking killing people in the ring. Yeah. And then you got Ramen Man, who, who, who kills a guy on, on live radio. <laughs> He snaps him in half, and he's a super, again, he's a superhero. People, people seek this guy for justice. Yeah. And it, and it, it was, it, it's the Olympic Games, man. The Olympic Games, he basically tears someone in half on TV. And then there's Wars Man that cuts, that stabs Pentagon in the face, tears off his wing, and kills him. Yeah, and then he kills prisoners, too. Yeah. And for training. Yeah, all that crazy Oh, then, oh, we can't forget about the big one. Oh, who was the that? Buffalo Man was oh. a Satan worshiper. <laughs> yeah, all the villains are basically Satan worshippers because they're devils. So, like, if that, that was, if, if you thought that wasn't normal, I mean, like, shit. <laughs> Satan is an actual character <laughs> in the series. Yeah. Well, they, they fight. I mean, how many superheroes actually go against Satan, man? Yeah. Like, not only that, now you just go against him, they wrestle him in the ring, boy. <laughs> they wrestle his followers and all that shit, and then... But then again, the power scale is like, pretty ridiculous, because originally they were, all, they were able to turn to giants, but then they stopped doing that. And then there's just so much questionable shit that doesn't make sense, like, in, during the uh, Robin Mask thing. Like, for example, in the manga, like... Um, like, fuck, I forgot what happened. Yeah, the point is, like, the wife was, a, his wife or something was supposedly dead. Or, I don't remember, or left him or something. I don't remember. But the point is, the, the arc ends with Ramas saying, like, I'll get you next time, can you come in? He was still a villain. Then the next arc, he just becomes a good guy for no reason. Yet, in the anime, they fixed it by actually having the wife pass away, him meeting his sister. Then he recovers at the end of the arc and he becomes a full-fledged hero again. 
So there's stuff like that where the manga kind of fucks up sometimes, or sometimes the anime fucks up <laughs> in its story. See, that's, that's the thing about Kaneko Man. Like, if you want the true Kaneko Man experience, you just got to go with both anime and manga. You just got to go with both. Yeah. Cause it's the only way. There's a lot of pros and cons within both series. Because the like both series have to share a bullshit or just like confusing stuff that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> well, that's what kind of makes it entertaining too, because it's so ridiculous. But you can get so manly at times too with your manly friendship. Yeah, I mean, dude, we're talking about friendship. Like people, like fucking die, and come back to life just for a brief moment of time, just to save their friends, man. Yeah, even if it doesn't make sense, because like Buffalo Man. <laughs> was fucking dead, he had his head chopped off, decapitated and all that. And then Terry Man, who's lost his arms to Ashra Man because... Yeah, it, oh yeah. Because, <laughs> because Ashra Man has this ability to steal people's arms and add them to his own somehow, I don't know, he just does. And then Terry Man's asking like, help me Buffalo Man, and Buffalo Man rises from the grave, teleports his arms to be stuck on Terry Man's arms for a brief moment. Somehow. <laughs> Or... And then he uses his arms to win the fight. Yeah. And, and <laughs> I'm then... like, what the fuck, bro? And then there's like other shit. Like when, um, during like Neptune Man and Big the Budo, when, um, Ramen, when Mongo Man and Buffalo Man were fighting them, out of nowhere, Brock and Junior saying, like, come on, Wars Man, you gotta help them. And then Wars Man's mask somehow spits out a fucking bear claw <laughs> to save Mongo Man. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> So much random bullshit in Kaneko, man. It's it's glorious. Yeah, but it's always manly, though. It's like you know they're doing it for their friends. <laughs> I mean, again, I, I know it's later on. It's like an ultimate muscle, but or maybe in one of the other Kaneko man parts. But I remember you telling me there's like this one secret move that Brock and Junior shows to Jade. Yeah. That's just the most ridiculous fucking thing. Yeah, it's in the ultimate muscle tag. It, this this is all raw. Most of it's still raw. Is that there's this move where Brock and well in this series um they actually took time travel into consideration so yeah basically these time trolls just attacked Brock and Junior and because of that like Brock and Junior lost his arm so that affected Jade's timeline because he couldn't remember he, basically Brock and Junior never taught Jade like this the Red Rain of Berlin which requires an arm to use so instead in his memories his his whole past was altered which means that he taught him a different technique and this technique which is so elaborate requires you to like spin your shoulder on like on a pole at the edge of the ring so you spin around and it makes you leap in the air at super speed or whatever and then you grab your left leg break it and then it turns to a blade <laughs> i'm like how did brock and jr even figure that out like if i break my leg it will turn into a blade <laughs> and it's not just like it just like a blade comes out of it nothing no his complete leg just transforms into like this giant sword thing <laughs> So I'm just like, how? How and why? <laughs> I mean, Sunshine is one thing, because he could shape shift and he's made of sand, so you could do all these different combos with him, but that... <laughs> I mean, Brock and Jr., as far as we're concerned, is like a somewhat normal person. Like, he was a normal person, because he's a human that turned into a Chojin with the, um, the thing, that's what his family does. <laughs> so he's like Geronimo. Uh that oh, you know, okay. he became a children. He was all originally human, and, but <laughs> still, how do you do that? Oh, actually, speaking of that, Geronimo, when he, when he, before he was even a real children, he was like manly as fuck, and then he became a children. He just got sidelined. Yeah, I was just like, well, what the fuck happened, Geronimo? <laughs> I don't, I don't think you should have became a children. I think you just should have stayed. Yeah, man, he was like lifting all the entire five, the five story. Ring. You know, getting everybody out, and then he fought Sunshine. <laughs> he destroyed him. Yeah, yeah, and then again, he's not a chode, so he's like a normal, normal man going against these like freaks of nature. <laughs> <laughs> and then, it, oh, actually, the other appeal is that he can get ridiculously violent. Oh yeah. yeah we mentioned a couple of violent things already, but uh, what's what another really fucked up shit? Like when Kaneko Man fights Sneak Gator, he just rips his mouth open. He just rips them all thin and then, um, I was like, uh... Yeah, like, when he's fighting Buffalo Man, he's getting, like, repeatedly stabbed by him. Yeah, no, even when he was fighting Robin Mask, Robin was, like, stabbing him in the back of his helmet. Yeah. 
trying to break his back too. <laughs> like, look. yeah, I know. And like Robin Bass was going ballistic because of his like, I forgot what, because he got like a dent in his helmet or something like that. He was just going ballistic. Yeah, he got a hit. In, he started bleeding because he hit his head. So uh, that's what got him mad. And then actually, what, what's what's well, thing? That's an. This is one example of the inconsistencies or like uh, what about this happening like you never see Robin Mask coach ever again until the end with the exception of that arc yeah, yeah so there's just stuff like that that happens in the in the whole series I'm just like wondering like well, what the hell happened yeah, yeah. and like in, that in seems the relevant. Arc, it's like it was the teacher student combo but like he doesn't really teach Warsman anything yeah well supposedly he taught him everything in the for the, the Olympics but whatever I guess. And Warsman was another character that had a really promising start, but like hasn't. He just gets wrecked nowadays. Or well, from what I've been reading, he just continuously gets wrecked. Yeah, he only has like a little comeback during the scramble for the throne, and then he really makes a comeback in Ultimate Muscle when he's teaching Kevin Mask everything. So that was like his highlight, because even fans were like sending letters to the author saying that. Like, make Warsman badass again. <laughs> make Warsman great again. Yeah. Bring back make the war. <laughs> Bring Mr. back the war. Yeah. Yeah, the Russian will teach an Englishman how to be a man. <laughs> Kevin. Oh, Kevin. Uh, see, that's another good thing about Kaneko, man. It's, it's international. Yeah, all the characters are from different places, even if they seem like stereotypes. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, again, like, the Terry Man at first seems stereotypical as fuck, but like, Terry Man is such a good character, you know, you find it. You're like, yeah, Terry Man. Yeah, you saved Kiniku Man many times. Terry Man has took constant bullets, lost a leg, lost arms, <laughs> lost his life, all <laughs> for friendship. Yeah. Terry Man's like the best bro, man. Yeah. Oh, like your back. Yeah. Well, anyways, back to the. I guess I'll mention the villains because the villains are pretty fucked up because they won't fucking die. Like in the, the when they first show up in the Seven Devil Children arc, when it's like when you defeat a devil, we take something with us. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> like the mountain, <laughs> in the mountain nearly killed Terry Man, fucking Spring Mangled Ricochet Man, and or Wolf Man, whatever, and the um, who else was killed? Yeah, both men. <laughs> Uh, fucking Mr. Carmen almost killed Brock and Jr. If it weren't for Ryan Man jumping in the fight. Oh, <laughs> uh, was it Ryan Man? It was Ryan Man. <laughs> yeah, Ryan Man wrecks almost everybody. <laughs> yeah, see, Ryan Man, it's like, I always question, because, like, how he lost the Wars Man. It's like, it always seems like later on, like, Ryan Man's, like, this, like, almighty. Because, like, you wanted. Buffalo Man was like, I, I want to pair up with you. He's like, you worthy of my power. But I'm like, he got wrecked by, like, Warsman, who got, like, wrecked by Buffalo Man. Yeah. <laughs> power scanning is yeah. fucked up. Yeah, I, it's still question that far. I'm like, how did, how did Robin lose? He's, like, he's strong as fuck. Yeah. And then Other you got... Other Trojans, like, admire his ability. Yeah, Brock and... He converted Brock and Jr. <laughs> I know. Well, okay, mind you, mind you, for those listening, <laughs> Robin... Robin Man killed his dad. And ended up making Rocket Jr. his fanboy. Just, yeah. just let that settle in. Yeah, and, but again, that also seems kind of inconsistent, but I'll, I'll talk about that later, like how shit improves as the years pass. Yeah, because there's like so many arcs that are so good. It, well, Scramble the Throne, like I feel like that, got on, that went on for too long. But... Yeah, there's, there's a lot of diversity in Kaneko Man. You got all these different villains, all these outrageous character designs and all that shit. I mean, like, some of the perfect children are like Screw Kid and Ken the Man. They're like some of the most bizarre designs ever. Yeah, I know. There's this one, like, Warsman killed them, but there's this one guy in the Trojan Olympics that just had a teacup for a head, and his weapon was a tea bag that was like hard as iron. Yeah, yeah. And he just swing around. <laughs> tea Pac Man. And then he yeah. gets, he fucking, the way he kills him in the anime is so ridiculous, because he just drinks oh, yeah. it. <laughs> he just drinks it. <laughs> For all you know, that's like his brain. <laughs> yeah, it's like Wars Man. Or his soul or something. That's just like, that's, that's 
wrong. Yeah. Because I know in the manga, he just, like, punches him, he cracks. Yeah, he just stabs him, like, with it. But this yeah. one's, like, even worse, he's drinking it. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know what he does. Again, just like the same thing with Ramen Man. When he kills Rocket Man, and in the manga, he just tears him apart. In the anime, he, like, grinds his bones and turns him to ramen. Yeah, I was like, oh. Like, which is worse? I mean, one of them is gorier, but the other one I'm probably imagining is much more painful. Yeah, probably more disturbing, too. <laughs> it's he... like you're breaking all his bones, grinding them down, and turning it into noodles, and dunking it in hot water. You know, it's supposed to be silly, but you can't help but find it kind of fucked up, too. <laughs> it's like it's, it's, a, it's a really extreme Mortal Kombat fatality about the blood. <laughs> and then you got, like, like um, Neptune Man and like in the Ultra Muscle Tag when he teams up with Sailor Jean that they tear off people's faces by slamming their arms into their face <laughs> with a lariat. Yeah, I know. Like these are, uh, I don't know. Like, Kaneko characters can like go into Mortal Kombat. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna be fucking violent. <laughs> oh. And then you got um, what's another character that was pretty out there? Oh, okay, I got. I remember one. Sunshine when he was fighting Geronimo. Oh. Fucking fucked up his arm. <laughs> Sunshine, like, again, that, that's the name of a villain. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he fucked up. He fucked up Geronimo's arm, and then he fucked up Kinika Man Great also by crushing him with his steamroller <laughs> that he keeps in his chest. <laughs> uh, yeah. Curse roller. Fuck you know. And then you got Ashram Man that steals people's arms. I mean, Ashram Man is so weird. I mean, you got a guy that can steal people's arms, grow his arms back. He has six arms to begin with. Then he can do these water spider webs. Alright, alright. Yeah, just go there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, it's pretty crazy. Can he command it? So, I guess let me move on to like the other muscle parts, because Ultimate Muscle is the one that everyone's familiar with, and that wants a sequel to Can he command, but... Mm, as a sequel and probably it doesn't look good but then it doesn't live up to the expectations of the fans of the first series though because uh, a, a lot of characters are like vastly improved They're, like the writing is like so much smarter now <laughs> that's saying a lot <laughs> I, I, I guess the problem with Ultimate Muscle is that a lot of the new characters kind of suck or they're not as interesting as compared to the originals and it's mostly focused on kid muscle more than anybody. But yeah, the writing gradually just gets better. And a lot of characters are like, oh, you find out more stuff about the ninja, about King Kokusaman, about uh, Sunshine, freaking Ashra Man, especially by the end of the manga. <sighs> and Wars Man, of course, like he finally got his like respect Brock and Jr. got some respect also with Jade and then things get even better <laughs> things get even better with Kini Command 2011 which continues from where the original series left off and everyone is just like holy shit it's like they're making you feel feels for almost every minor character I'm like holy shit <laughs> give me the fucking feels feel Niku man <laughs> feel Niku <laughs> Actually, Junkman is another example, one of the most weird Chojin, because he has, like, oh, these two arm crusher things, and then... Well, well then again, I'll tell you... he have, like, two faces, too, or... Yeah, that yeah, a face in the back of his head, and then... Then again, the... It's kind of interesting, Kanikman has, like, this blend of goofiness and manliness, because um, one of the most manly designs would be, like, someone like Mammoth Man. Oh, yeah. But then, at the same time, you get, like, um... Something like Prisman or King Ton 100, which are like a big white and like this prism shapes. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's also Planet Man, too. Yeah, Planet Man's like pretty out there. Yeah, his power was like pretty <laughs> overpowered when you think about it. It was just like, he yeah. Just... Like, what did he like punch Canada on, like, on his map on his chest and he just knocked out Canadian men? Yeah, yeah, he defeats the Chojins that his that represents the country, so he could have taken out almost everybody. In fact, he had everyone hostage. Yeah, see, that's another thing about Kaneko Man. Not only are the powers ridiculous, they're also like really, really overpowered. I mean, he even had Black Hole where he could just suck you in. Yeah, and even Planet Man was space. able to create a sun in his hand. Yeah, and then uh. Pentagon could stop time. 
Yeah, it stopped the time, and then, well, he stops person's time, so, you know, everyone thing else still moves, but basically he freezes a person, so it's about the same. And then, um, like, fucking, oh my god, I forgot what, what, his, what his children's name was, it's, it's from, from, it's very early in the tag, Mr. VTR, like, he, he was super oh, yeah, yeah, broken. Yeah, I just got finished reading that fight, I'm like, what the fuck is up with this ability? Yeah, VTR can fucking, like, pause you, shrink you, change the, change the area, like, he, not only can he alter time, he could fucking change the background and then, um, uh, make you weaker. reality. Yeah, he's, like, super broken, and then, even, like, affect canon material by <laughs> fucking up continuity by, you know, tearing up, like, a character's move set, so it gets cancelled out. And then, yeah, like, there's, like, a set king who can, like, learn other people's moves by, like, tapes. Yeah, stick has a king, and then, um, fucking, there's another character in the Scramble for the Throne arc, like, like, the, the Great Mixer, or I forgot what his Japanese name was, but he could pretty much steal your power-ups. <laughs> That's kind of out there. <laughs> oh, actually, no, Ashra Man. Oh. Ashra Man, some, it's like the whole conflict of the whole Dream Tag arc. He can steal fucking friendship. <laughs> yeah, okay, like, keep that in mind, people. Stealing friendship. Imagine if there was a villain that could do that in any other current Shonen series right now. Just just think to yourself, how fucked up would the main cast be? Yeah, he can steal so friendship so and lock it in friendship. a box. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, shit, man. Ashra Man would, like, Destroy fairy tale. <laughs> it, it, it's all over. Yeah. Ash ka 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 ka. <laughs> yeah. What other bit? Well, Akuma Shogun when he showed up, he almost killed the entire Chojin race. Yeah, and he had like really weird abilities. Like his sweat can turn into diamonds. Or something. He's so manly <laughs> that his diamond can turn into sweat. I'm like, what? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, his sweat can turn into diamonds. I said it backwards. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's, it's weird though. Like, why? Why would you think of that? Like, why not? <laughs> like, I mean, nothing is too crazy for you, time ago. No, I mean, it's bad enough with Urino, with characters like Urino Man that he could just shrink people into a bond and flush them down the drain. Yeah, then he have a kid named Washass. Yeah, well, it's not his kid, but it's like from from oh. that tribe. Yeah, there's this character in Ultimate Muscle that in English he was called Hollywood Bull, but the real name was Washass. And he's like the fucking toilet. Yeah. And he gets defeated by getting shitted on. Right yeah. It's pretty disgusting. And then, um, like, uh, there's another children that's pretty outrageous that his name was, um, I think he was just called Skyscraper or something like that. But that's basically what he is. He's a fucking building. He's like, he's smaller than a building. He's still pretty big. So he's like 12, 13 feet tall children. So he's one of those big type guys. But, you know, he's not like a building size children. So. But th th that concept alone is crazy because even when they smash like the glass on his body, he still bleeds, which is pretty crazy. The same thing happens to all those other inanimate like object trilogies or the robot ones or whatever. Like they're not supposed to bleed, but they still do. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like one of those things where it's like, why are you bleeding, though? Yeah, it's pretty fucked. Like, um, but then there's some cool ideas. That, like they're so outrageous, but they're so cool too. Like all the uh transforming type Jojin like uh bike man and the the russian air, air plane Jojin like Iluki. oh yeah those guys always make me wonder I'm like did kiniku man inspire mucha lucha or transformers <laughs> <laughs> yeah because that's basically what they are i'm like oh crap and they're all wrestlers superheroes and super villains at that too <laughs> Too much. I mean, like, and then you get manly designs like Kinnika Man Soldier and the ninjas, like, and Ultimate Muscle it looks like much more manlier than the first series. And then, uh, yeah. Buffalo yeah, Man. Big Body looks pretty cool. Yeah, Big. I feel like Big Body was, like, not used well. They just threw him out pretty quickly. Yeah, no, he, he, was, he was gone pretty fast. Yeah, and then there was Mariposa, he also got taken out pretty quickly. Um, who else was there? Let's see, there was Zebra, Super Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, I already mentioned all the five, and then, like, a lot of Super Phoenix team are, like, pretty out there, like, Omega Man, which can, like, fucking copy abilities of different Chojins, I'm like, oh, come on, that's too much. Actually, Prisman, too, because he has the Capillera Ray, the Rainbow Beam that can kill any Chojin, so I'm like, fuck. 
then Neptune Man beat the Budo because I mean they can magnetize people and <laughs> yeah. But it's still more broken later on, like when you see them fight against uh, Mongo Man and Buffalo Man. That's when they go all out. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh wait, wait, ready. oh wait, you already finished that arc, yeah. Because then you saw them like time travel too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the yeah, they can they can reverse time by spinning the metal pole really fast. <laughs> But then again, it's cool because you could also they also sh grab lightning bolts from the sky and they throw them down. Yeah, like, the... like holy shit! <laughs> it's it's crazy. Just stop. Yeah. Well, then again, you also got moves like the Kinnik Buster, which like you know fucking slams the shit out of you. Yeah. Muscle docking, like Longhorn Train, all that Hurricane stuff. Mixer. Yeah, Hurricane Mixer, and then the Screwdriver, fucking <laughs> cut. Um, what was the name of Rhyme? Camel Clutch. <laughs> yeah, see, you know, with Robin Man, though, considering how fucking brutal he is and everything, <laughs> his special move being the Camel Clutch seems pretty tame. <laughs> Should be like the Especially when you, like, if you jump into Robin Man and, like, get in Robin Man, and I just saw the movie the other day. Yeah. Like, the motherfucker could shoot tigers and dragons out of his hands. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Who needs a summoning jutsu when you can just, like, punch and then you know stuff comes out <laughs> yeah and it's still not, it, it still is like one of my favorite anime moments of all time but he's he's fighting against that guy that can shoot lions out of his hands you know ramen man shoots two tigers and the guy's like nani <laughs> two tigers that's impossible <laughs> he just dies <laughs> not one but two <laughs> And then he Too fights much. a and then he fights a robot tiger later. <laughs> and the thing is, those tigers they don't just disappear. He just makes the tiger. Yeah, they materialize with his power. <laughs> so like, there's like a new he trained of for it. Moving around China, so if any kid dies from a tiger, it's Robin Man's fault. <laughs> yeah, I mean he trained to materialize tigers for like a whole month or something. So like... <laughs> and then later on, he can just. Materialized dragons. Yeah. Dragons don't even exist. Yeah. So he made dragons real. Well, there's a dragon at the end of Ramen Man, but he he didn't oh, okay. he didn't make it. <laughs> I, I don't know if that dragon is a, a manga thing or it's just only for the movie, but regardless, it's still pretty epic. <laughs> so like, yeah. There like there's some crazy moves Ramen Man. Like there's one called like the life stealing destruction blade. Yeah, which is like it's a kick and it never really permanently kills someone, but like the name's really hardcore. Yeah, no life destruction blade, like oh and then he also probably has like a bunch of different moves in that anime he's like it's crazy. because yeah, he has like what, a hundred and twenty chosen moves or something like that? Well, I don't know. Then he also has like the three point strike, which was probably the the first ever rapid fire punch possibly since the right. man, since the manga predates Fist of the North Star, so Unless there was somebody at Rini Kakeru that actually got a lot of punches before, but I don't know. Yeah, because like Rini Kakeru was like boxing, so. It's yeah, but it's, it's possible. Yeah, so uh, we should probably wrap this up in a bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Kaneko Man's already out there. It, it's good, it's fun, it's manly. You should check it out if you like over the top stuff. Or if you want a good piece of show in history, it's Kaneko Man. Might have started a lot of tropes that are very familiar with Shonen that a lot of people think Dragon Ball started. But yeah, I did a whole video on that, so you can always check that out. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think how many other Kaneko Man things are there. Uh... I mean, it's still going to this day, so it's just like, there is... Yeah, what it, what it needs is to get licensed, the manga to get licensed, because there's like over 100 volumes of material, so, fuck yeah. yeah. And then the anime, well, I would like the anime to get licensed, but also for the anime to get rebooted, or, you know, a new anime, because I've been thinking about that, like, what could they do, because I'm thinking the best choice is for them to do, um, to either start with a Demon Seed arc, which never got made in Ultimate Muscle, or just go straight into Part 3, since, like, there you get the best of both worlds, you get the Ultimate Muscle characters, that way the American fan base is more familiar, and then the Japanese can, like, you know, get excited, be the original fan base, because uh, you can see the original Kinnikuman characters in that arc, too. Right. 
and then we could just transition in or the other option is to go straight to part four but part four is not finished yet in manga so because that one's just like you know so epic <laughs> right. i don't know it's like you know let's make, let's take everything good from can you come in and make it better <laughs> Yeah, see, like, when it comes to rebooting, if there's, like, two shonen series that really want to get rebooted, it's either Kimiko Man or Otoku Juku. Mm. It was the only two, but the problem is, Toei has both. It's like, Toei, I want to believe you, but can, can I trust you? Yeah, the way they're doing stuff now is like, well, maybe the difference is because um, these are original stuff and not necessarily adaptations. I see. Maybe that's the reason, so, who knows? That's yeah, that's a, that's a good point. But see, with Kadiko Man, it would require a lot of attention. Yeah. Like, you gotta get, like, someone who's yeah. really passionate about Kadiko Man to work on it because of all the inconsistencies, which I'm pretty sure won't fly with that many of the modern audience. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I need to bring this up because I mentioned this earlier. Back to the whole Ryan Man and Brock and Jr. is that there's even, like, uh, recently there's translations of um, all these one-shots that kind of fill in the gaps for a lot of care a lot of the mistakes or errors in part one and they explain in detail how the hell brock and jr like became like respectful of ramen man and the same thing happens with terry man joining with kiniku man doing the american tour arc and same thing goes with the uh, how team soldier was formed and backstories to fucking urinal man and curry cook of all people <laughs> the backstories yeah, and they were like so dramatic too. I'm just like, holy shit. <laughs> How do you do it? <laughs> yeah, ever since Ultimate Muscle, they were, they were able to like take all their other characters and just improve them. So now they're not just like characters with gimmicks. Like in 2011, they gave you feels for Atlantis and Sneakator and Junkman and or, like even like Stick House of King was like, you know, oh, getting a bit of a spotlight. That's, that's yeah. pretty extreme. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they basically took like all their unpopular characters and just made them fucking emotional. <laughs> but yeah, they're still ridiculous as ever because I mean, one of their fights was a fucking Dalmatian character, <laughs> the Ultimate, oh. and then Strong the Budo is like fucking wrecking everybody. Akuma Shogun's wrecking everybody too. Like so far, all the perfect Chojin, like all the newer ones, have like these really ridiculously manly designs. I was like, holy crap! <laughs> yeah, see the art for you, Tom, bro. They drastically improved the oh, yeah. like now like the, the characters are big like yeah. muscle wise they're ripped yeah yeah it's, it's also what with Terry Man and Kaneko Man especially if you like compare like chapter one and they're like holy crap <laughs> oh god Terry Man in the beginning looks so bad <laughs> oh my god it was so bad that they fixed it it was like oh god Yeah, all the characters look so awesome. I just wish that more of it was translated and or more of it was licensed. And I think we went on enough for yeah. for all this I martial march. <laughs> yeah, that's enough. Yeah. So, any final words for this martial march? Because I don't even know where these are going. Or maybe we could just put them on both. <laughs> Somewhere. Yeah, I'm thinking either maybe both channels. I don't know. I don't know, we'll figure yeah. out. I don't work for much so much. Just, uh, stay manly. Yeah. Yeah. One day we'll go to Will Macho March. I don't know. <laughs> oh, see, I'm planning on talking about Will Manly series because, you know, too much dick. Yeah. You know? You I wanna... gotta see the female form every yeah. now and again just to remind like... myself, like, oh yeah. There's girls. <laughs> There's girls out there. <laughs> Whoa! Yay! Yeah, I need to go back and start doing the little manly characters again. But yeah. Yeah, hopefully things will rise up for me. Well, yeah, I guess that's it for now. That's, that's all.